May I have your attention, please? Shabbat shalom, everyone. I'm son of Israel Ebo, Benaya Hawkins, and I'd like to serve you forever as a priest starting very soon. It's now time to start finding your seats for Sabbath services. Yeah. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Anna Vision Label, our body Hawkins, and I'd like to serve you forever as a priest starting very soon. It's a privilege and honor to present to you the sons and daughters of Vision Label now entering the sanctuary. I now present son of Vision Label, Basli Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Now, the time of my speech today is trust in Yahweh and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, I'll be turning over to Proverbs 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5, found on page 497. And that says, trust in Yahweh with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, Yahweh knows what is best for us because he created us. You know, we can put our 100% full confidence in Yahweh because he is our father. And also, Yahweh does direct our path. Also on uh, Proverbs 3, verse 6, it says... In all your ways, acknowledge Yahweh, and he will direct your paths. And, you know, acknowledging Yahweh doesn't just mean, all right, I know Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, that's his name. Uh, in Hebrew, it's Y-H-W-H. It means acknowledging his laws and keeping those laws. Now, in all governments, there are laws that must be kept. However, the only difference is Yahweh's government is the only government that brings forth truth. Now, as the time gets closer, it does get harder. But, you know, when we trust in Yahweh through those tests and trials, we must trust in him. They are for our benefit. Yahshua is taught that we must learn by and love every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. In other words, Yahweh's laws. And uh, if you'll turn over to Matithia 4.4. Matithia 4.4 found on page 730. And it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Yahweh is in full control, and he can foretell the future. And no, other, no one can. Other than Yahweh, no one can foretell the future. And also, no man is smarter than Yahweh. Yahweh is the smartest being. Uh, Yahweh is the smartest being. And also, he is our supreme head, as law number two says. It says, submit to Yahweh as the supreme head to be in unity with Yahweh. And that's Deuteronomy 6, 4. So if we'll turn over to Deuteronomy 6, 4. That's found on page 152. And it says, Hear, o Israel, Yahweh is our Father, Yahweh is one. And also control in the American Heritage Dictionary means to exercise authority over oneself. Now, Yahweh is over all the gods. In fact, he, he judges the gods. So let's go ahead and turn over to Psalms 82.1. Psalms 82.1. And it says, Yahweh stands in the assembly of the gods, Elohim, and he gives judgment among the gods, Elohim.
Now, we must learn that we need to trust in Yahweh, uh, especially during these troublous times. You know, the great Kahan Yedidia, he's trusting in Yahweh, and he's been in prison for eight years. Praise Yahweh. And also, when Overseer Yisrael Hawkins, when he went to jail, when he was in jail for, for righteousness' sake, he went to jail for righteousness' sake. Now, in the 15th book of Yisrael, chapter 40, verse 32, it says, Johnson added his department is also worried about possible threats of particular communities in the U.S. based on perceived religion, ethnicity, or nationality. Anyone who is not well, white is that how we're going to classify them. The birth certificates don't mean anything. Now they said, you've got to look at them. Are they wearing a veil? Is their clothing different? Maybe we should all, maybe we should all get us uh, some uniforms. No, forget about that. Forget about that. Put your trust in Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Applause. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. And as you can see there, pastor is telling us that we must put our trust in Yahweh and not lean on our own understanding. And in conclusion, we must trust in Yahweh and not lean on our own understanding. And for my closing scripture, I'd like to turn over to Matthew 4, verse 4, found on page 730. And it says, but he answered and said to them, it, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. And with that, if you all please stand. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to the great Deacon Israel Abel Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. The title of my sermon today is Trust in Yahweh. And if you look up the, the sunset uh, before 1224 in Strong's, so uh, preparation day sundown, in the Strong's it's number uh, 539, and it means to build up or support, to foster as a parent or nurse, to, to render, uh, be firm or faithful, to trust or believe, to be permanent or quiet, morally to be true or certain, uh, to go to the right hand, believe, assurance, faithful, sure, established, trust, verified, steadfast, continuance, father, bring up, nurse, it says here, it means to be firm, endure, be faithful, be true, stand fast, trust, have belief, and believe. It appears in all periods of biblical Hebrew about 96 times and only in the causative and passive stems. In the passive stem, it has several emphases. It indicates that a subject is lasting or enduring. It refers to a firm place, a place into which a peg will be driven so that it will not or so that it will be immovable a peg will remain firmly anchored even though it was pushed so hard that it breaks off at the point of entry the bible also speaks of faithful people who fulfill their obligations meaning trustworthy and also means considering something to be trustworthy uh, is an act of full trusting or believing this is the emphasis in the first biblical occurrence, and Abraham believed in Yahweh and he counted it to him for righteousness. The meaning here is that Abraham was full of trust and confidence in Yahweh and that he did not fear him. Uh, Abraham believed Yahweh so as to accept what he said as true and trustworthy. So these, these things can be found in the meaning of uh, 539, having trust and confidence to hold fast uh, steadfast, trustworthy, and have belief. 
In the first book of Israel, chapter 3, verse 8, the pastor says, The house of Yahweh is actually built on prophecy, and it is for the believers so that they can have confidence and trust in Yahweh. What Yahweh wants you to develop in your mind is trust in him. That is what Yeshua preached. He said, the reason I show you these things in advance is so that when they come to pass, you will know there was a prophet among you, and this was true. Then you can trust in Yahweh forever. And part of the meaning of the word trust is to believe. And remember what Yachanan 6 and verse 29 says. Yachanan 6 and verse 29 found on page 821. And it says, Yahshua answered and said to them, This is the work of Yahweh that you believe in him whom he has sent. And if you'll turn over to Psalms chapter 37. And uh, starting in verse 3, it's, this is found on page 447. And starting at verse 3, it says, Trusting you, great Yahweh, and doing righteousness, we shall dwell in your land and be fed on your faithfulness. And the side note, G6 there says, To trust in Yahweh and do according to his will are sure signs that he will never fail us. And it says, Doing righteousness. In Deuteronomy 6.25, Righteousness is keeping all of Yahweh's laws. Verse 4, Delight in great Yahweh, trust only in him, and he will bring to pass the desires of our hearts. Look over to verse 5. It says, Commit your ways to Yahweh, trust in him, and he will act. Side note G1 there says, Be not led by your own wisdom, but obey Yahweh, and he will finish his work in you. Verse 6, He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Verse 8 says, Cease from anger, do, do no evil, forsake wrath, for it only leads to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. Remember Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 2. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on Yahweh shall inherit the earth. Look down to verse, verse 16. It says, The little that the righteous man does now have is better than the great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahweh upholds the righteous. Yahweh knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Look down to verse 23. A righteous man's steps are ordered by Yahweh. A righteous man delights in his way. Though he may stumble, he will not be utterly cast down by Yahweh, for a righteous Yahweh holds him up with his hands. Verse 27. Depart from evil, do righteousness, and live forever. And if you look over to verse 39... It says, the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is our strength in the time of trouble. Yahweh, will, Yahweh shall help us and save us. Yahweh shall deliver us from the wicked. Yahweh shall save us, for we trust in him. And I want to read the definition of the word trust from the Webster's. It says, an assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. One in which confidence is placed, and we can place our full confidence in Yahweh, uh, in the house of Yahweh, to really rely on the truthfulness or accuracy of and believe. And positive law number one says believe in Yahweh as the only source of power in the universe. And prohibitive law number one says do not trust in any power but Yahweh. In the seventh book of Israel, part two, Chapter 21, verse 18, Pastor says, And if you think we can't be raided, he was talking about when they planned to raid. He says, You know, it would be up to Yahweh to prove whether or not you got liquid for a backbone or whether you really got the spirit of Yahweh and you're trusting in Yahweh. If you trust in Yahweh, you won't be, you know, shaking in your boots and turning and going and serving the Baal world. Now, Pope Francis said that Christmas 2015 would probably probably be the last Christmas. Does that mean nuclear war for 1224-2016? It's all going to end with nuclear burning in this generation. And we know that this generation started in 1934 when the scriptures say knowledge would be increased. Uh, 
the birth of the last day's witness. This generation started in 1934, and we are at the end. And the Vatican City does not want the house of Yahweh to be heard by you. But the only truth, truth is offered here at Yahweh's house. So trust in Yahweh. There's no protection in the world. It may look better, but the protection of Yahweh is the only thing that's going to get you through this mess that's, that's coming. And with that, if you'll all please stand. It's my great honor and privilege to present to you the next speaker, the great Con Ilya Heiler Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may all be seated. One thing about the future priests, they will keep you on your toes. <laughs> they will keep you going. Um, if you could, I want you to please turn open your book of Yahweh, because we want to cover some things before we get into what's going on in today's society. Um, and the things that we see coming to a closure. We see this plan, this great plan that Yahweh had from the beginning, of course, the creation of mankind, and leading up to what we're doing today and, and what jobs we have today and the importance of what we need to do. And I want to get set in your minds very quickly, um, speaking of influences and values, because that's very important. And this is all going off of last week, I think everyone's familiar, the great Con Benjamin mentioned it and Pastor uh, called us and told us about the websites going down. And the websites were down for approximately about 12 hours, from about 3 in the afternoon to about 3 in the morning. But Yahweh's branch.com didn't go down. So we actually started looking last week, trying to figure out, well, is there something in it? What's it about? And then... For some reason, we thought, I wonder what the gematry is for our websites. I wonder if it means anything. Um, well, of course it did. It means a lot. Turn over to, um, turn to Deuteronomy real quick. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Because we need this in our mind first. Chapter 12 and verse 30. It's found on page 158. Chapter 12 and verse 30. I found on page 158. Look up to verse 29 first, and it says, When Yahweh your father cuts off the nations from in front of you, and you displace them and live in their land, be careful not to be ensnared into following them by asking about their gods, or their Elohim, saying, How did these nations serve their gods, or Elohim? I also will do the same. Notice verse 31, you must not worship Yahweh your father in their way. For every abomination to Yahweh which he hates, they have done to their gods, Elohim. They even burned their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. Yes, they send them to war. They give them to Molech. Whatever I commanded, verse 32, whatever I command you, be careful to observe and do it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. And remember also what Deuteronomy tells us about going to the priests who were in office at that time. Ask of them what we shall do, and be careful to observe each and everything that they tell us to do. Because it is life. It is life. But going back to influences and values, keeping that in mind, because seeking after the gods, seeking how they serve their gods, you're actually you're seeking influence. You're, you're being taught how to go that way. And on page 60 of the character unit, it says, influences are all around us. Now, we'll read about your values, and we'll go back to that, but we're going to start with influences first. And it says, your values play such a key role in the development of your character that you must be aware of how influences affect the things that are important to you. And then, of course, it tells us that an influence is something or someone that has the ability to affect your attitude, way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. And it also goes on to say that how you are influenced can affect what you value or motivate you to create new values. And then at the very bottom, it reminds us that influences can come in all different sizes. They can be positive or negative, subtle or bold, but the one thing that they all have in common is they have the ability to affect what you value and affect your character in either a positive or negative way. And that's one thing we have to understand, be in complete agreement with, whatever we take into our bodies, whatever we do, it's either influencing us in a positive or in a negative way. There is no 
down the middle road, we're going to kind of bring a little bit of both in. No, it's either going toward Yahweh or away from Yahweh, one or the other. And remember on page 6 where it talks about values, and it says values of what you believe in or feel strongly about. Do not forget Yachanan chapter 6 and verse 29 where we're told that we must believe into the one whom Yahweh has sent. That should be a very important value for all of us. But values are what you believe in or feel strongly about, and they also play a key role in developing your character. And the sum total of everything you value becomes your value system. Well, in going through the gematria of the websites, we found some very interesting things that let us know how we're being influenced when we go on the Internet. What does Yahweh.com do for us? What does YisraelHawkins.com do for us? What does Yahweh's Chosen Branch.com do for us? And then compare that to, well, the Internet is full of many ways to see how the others serve their gods, right? It's out there all around us. Well, going into the gematria, is word uh, in the gematria, Yahweh.com equals in the Jewish gematria, 1405. 1405. That's what it is in the Jewish gematria. The definition for word number 1405, now think about this for a moment, okay? It means mound, mound, M-O-U-N-D. And it comes from word 1389, so the word 1389, 1389. The word 1389 means hill, hill, H-I-L-L, and it comes from word 1387. Well, it means hill, uh, poetic for mountain, used in place names, and it comes from word 1387, which means hill. Now, with that in mind, turn over to page 949, and this is a very familiar scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16. So Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16. Now remember, it says, This is the covenant that I will renew with them after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. So remember, Yahweh says he's going to do these things. He's going to put them into our minds. He's going to put them into our hearts. So obviously, Yahweh is going to have someone doing a job, instilling something into us. With that in mind, turn over to Yekitskia. Yekitskia chapter 34 knowing that Yahweh is doing something, and we're going to build upon this, so, so be patient as we build upon this, because Yahweh is doing something. Turn over to you, kids, get page 655, chapter 34. And I want you to look at verse 25 and 26. Remembering that Yahweh said he's going to put something in our hearts and in our minds, uh, we must believe into the one sent, and that's something we have to value. And then looking at what we're seeing here, remember the word 1405 went all the way to 1387 and meant hills. Hills. Well, look at verse 25 of chapter 34, verse 25. And I will renew with them the covenant of peace. Remember to change the hearts and minds, the peaceful solution we've seen in Hebrews 10:16. And will bring an end to the evil, beastly governmental system in the land. And they will dwell in safety in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and they will place and they and I will make them and the places surrounding my hill a blessing. My hill a blessing. And I will call showers to come down. In their seasons, and there will be showers of blessings. And this will take place in this hill. As Isaiah also calls it a mountain. It will become huge. So that's just one part. This is something that I know it's not a hidden secret. It's kind of common knowledge now. Word 606. Word 606 from Yahweh.com in Gematria. The English Gematria is number 606 for Yahweh.com. And that means man, human being, mankind. And that comes from word 582, and that means a man 
or individual. Man or individual, men, man, mankind. But specifically a man, mortal man, person, mankind. And of course, the gematria for Yahweh.com being man, remember that in English, Yahweh.com in centri- uh, simple gematria means 101. And if you have a radio, you know who 101 is, right? Yes, he's a man. Um, I don't think that's a hidden secret anymore, but that man is the one sent, Yisra Hawkins. So with that in mind, going to YisraHawkins.com. YisraHawkins.com, we talked about this hill, this place we should go, this man that will be there, this man that will lead, this man. YisraHawkins.com, well, what does Yahweh have to say about this man, Yisra Hawkins? Well, if you look up the... The words in Gematria, YisraelHawkins.com, in Jewish Gematria equals 2141. 2141. Now, word 2141, notice, it means to be pure, be bright, be clean, be bright, be shining, be clean, be pure. Also, notice to cleanse. Make, cleanse, make, clean. Now that word comes from word 2135. Word 2135. And the word 2135 also means to be clean, to be pure, to be clear. Crystal clear. Notice also to be clear, to be justified. To be justified, this is a court, and the courts of heaven recognize this man, and he is justified before Yahweh. (laughs) Praise Yahweh. But also notice what he's doing for us, what he's doing for us. To make clean, make pure, to keep clean, and to keep pure. To cleanse, also to make yourself clean, to purify oneself. Now, of course, this right here goes back to YisraHawkins.com, YisraHawkins.com. Now, we want to take a look at some scriptures. Speaking of this cleansing, Yisra Hawkins and what he's doing, go over to Psalms chapter 51, Psalms chapter 51, found on page 453. So it's Psalms chapter 51, and we want to look at verses 1 through 6, page 453. And it says, Have mercy upon us, O Yahweh, according to your love kindness, according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sins. Remember, that's what it talks about, Yisrael Hawkins. He is going to cleanse. He's going to cleanse. For we acknowledge our transgressions, our sin is always before us. Before you come to the house of Yahweh, did you truly know what your transgressions were? Did you know what your sin was? No, we needed someone who was clean and pure to point these things out for us. Against you, you only have we sinned and committed the evil in your eyes to the intent that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, we were born in iniquity, and in sin our mothers conceived us. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. Yes, in the hearts and the minds of his people, that's where he desires it. And in the hidden parts, you will make us to know wisdom. He's going to cause us to know wisdom. Now, keeping that in mind, knowing this wisdom, coming to this place where this evil beastly system will be broken down, We want to go to Yahweh's chosen branch. There we go, Yahweh's chosen branch. And notice, Yahweh's chosen branch in Jewish gematria equals 1825. 1825. The word 1825, notice, is the word likeness. Likeness. And that comes from word um, 1819. Word 1819, remember we're speaking of Yahweh's chosen branch, to be like, resemble, 
to be like, resemble, to like, compare. This is very important. To imagine or to think. To think. Remember, to be like. And then last but not least, to make oneself like. To make oneself like. Remember Genesis 1.26. Yahweh said that I and I will create man in my image and they will have rulership over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creature that roams about. Now, keep in mind, turn over to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. So remember, this man who is pure, who is clean, who will make cleanse, who will purify, who will clean, and who will resemble like Yahweh, be like Yahweh, who will think like Yahweh. Look at verse, in chapter 55, look at verse 4. Behold, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you will run to you, because Yahweh your Father, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Who does Isaiah 49.3 says that Yahweh will be glorified through? Yisrael Hawkins. And remember that because we're going to go through something there. Because to glorify Yahweh isn't just to get up here and say praise Yahweh. You know, we think of it on a very small scale. Is Yahweh glorified in this earth right now? No. In fact, he's ridiculed and he's persecuted. Notice verse um, 6. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Who is Yahweh to this world? Yisrael Hawkins is Yahweh to this world. Let the wicked, notice, let the wicked forsake his own way, the unrighteous man his own thought. Let him return to Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him. Return to our Father, and he will abundantly pardon. Now notice, speaking of this wicked man, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, says Yahweh, or says Yisrael Hawkins to this dying world. Your thoughts are not Yahweh's thoughts. Your ways are not Yahweh's ways. We must come into complete unity with our teacher. In verse 9 it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And look to verse 11. So is my word, the law and the prophets, that goes forth from my mouth. Who is the mouth of Yahweh in these last days? Yisrael Hawkins, the one who cleanses this world. Uh, so from my mouth, my word will not return to me void without producing effect, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For the way I sent that one sent, remember, look over to page 561. 561, where in verse chapter 49, verse 3, it says, And he said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, through whom I will be glorified. Well, look down to verse 8. This man who cleanses, this man who puts these things into our inward parts, this man who is justified before the courts of heaven, who is like Yahweh, this is this man he's speaking of here. And this is what Yahweh says. In an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. I will protect you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth. To cause to inherit the desolate heritages. To restore this earth. Have we restored this earth back to Yahweh yet? No, but notice before there's going to be a great destruction that comes. And what does Yahweh say to this man who he will be glorified through? I will protect you. Remember, when it speaks of Yisrael Hawkins, if you are a seed of Yisrael Hawkins, and if you are like Yahweh or being like the one sent, the only way we know Yahweh and the only way we know how to value what Yahweh values, to think how Yahweh thinks and to act like Yahweh acts, is to follow the one scent that Yahweh has sent to us. There's absolutely no other way than to follow that mouth, that spokesperson of Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Look over to Isaiah chapter 1. There's two words that if you... Leave with this right here today, two words I want you to all remember, speak them to each other, quote them to each other. Um, we have the young men doing this right now, trying to get them to repeat this every time, every day, say this, because there's two things that we have to do here. 
But if you look to verse 1, or chapter 1 and verse 16, remember we're talking about cleansing ourselves to be, to resemble uh, Yahweh, or the mouth, the spokesperson of Yahweh. In verse 16, chapter 1, it's found on page 530, it says, Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Quit seeking after their gods. Get off the internet unless you're on Yahweh.com, YisraelHawkins.com, or Yahweh's Chosen Branch.com, or something that comes from Yahweh's house. Don't look to the gods. Don't turn on the TV and look to see what the gods are doing. Go to Yahweh Prophetic Television. If you allow the influence to come in, surely it can pull you away. Wash ourselves, come out from amongst them, partake not of their sins. In verse 17, learn to do righteousness, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be made white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be as wool. Notice verse 19. If you will be willing and obedient. The two key words that I would hope that everyone would remember this day. Willing and obedient. You will eat the fruit of the land. Look over to the side note there. A, it says have peace. If we will be willing and obedient. Now who is that being willing and obedient to? The mouth of Yahweh. The one sin of Yahweh. If we will do these things, we will have protection and we will have peace. But notice verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. Yes, his spokesperson is warning this dying world. If they will come in and be willing and obedient, they will have protection and they will inherit a kingdom that none of us to this day can understand the glory that possesses, uh, that is possessed in that kingdom. But if we refuse what Yahweh has sent us, we will totally lose it. Now, keeping that in mind and going on to this news, because we're going into a news that does not recognize this one cent. Of course, now they're, keep in mind there are many that are. There are many that are trying to get here. There's many that are seeking to cleanse themselves, to wash themselves, to be clean, and not to be partakers of this world and to come out from amongst these wars, this way of the gods. Well, in Syria... Recently, of course, they were, shoot, they were shot. You know, it's almost like when Syria, Syria is in a fight and everybody wants to throw a punch in. Um, and Israel also wants to throw a punch in. Well, Israel recently just shot missiles at Damascus. And, of course, Syria, they're trying to deal with Damascus, but yet they're trying to deal with the European countries. They're trying to deal with the United States. And, of course, they have Russia there with them. But, of course, that takes us to Aleppo. Now, Aleppo, if you remember, when we showed the news just a few months ago, they were talking about how, you know, it's not so bad to use a nuclear bomb. We can use a tactical way of, you know, using this nuclear bomb, and it won't affect everybody. Well, of course, in the news, you'll see where they're saying that Aleppo is now back into the Syrian government control, and it is now free. In fact, now they're even talking about peace talks and how they can now have peace in Syria. Now, watch the news very carefully because Sergei Lavrov and John Kerry, they met in, um, in Rome at the Vatican. They met in Rome, and they had an agreement. And Russia was kind of drawn back, and they thought, wow, the United States, is, they're actually seeing it our way for a change. And after three days, they were supposed to meet again, and the United States in three days said, no, we decided we're not doing that. Watch what Russia says. They caught on to America, bought time to rearm the people that were fighting against Russia. They got three days so they could get some things in so they could continue their battle. Remember, Vatican is nothing, the Vatican, the divine serpent, is nothing but deception. And they deceive, and they try to conquer, and they want to conquer. They divide and conquer. Well, of course, this Aleppo, as we're watching it, you're going to see Russia and Syria, and Turkey now coming in for peace talks, plus the European countries. Now, the European countries are accusing Russia of committing war crimes. Remember, last time we showed the news, they said that Russia was toxic, that they're already at war with Russia. The United States, you'll see, um, I'm amazed with Vladimir Putin. He did something that nobody else could do. He himself controlled who the president of the United States is going to be. When you listen to it, I mean, that's the most amazing thing. There was billions of dollars spent in presidential campaigns. Uh, thousands of people voted, but Vladimir Putin decided it all. Now, that, 
think back. When you hear these things, think back to where Saddam Hussein had chemical weapons or he had weapons of mass destruction. Remember, this was testified before a committee in Congress just to find out, oh, we were wrong. And remember when the World Trade Centers were hit by planes and we immediately knew who did it, so we bombed Afghanistan, who we say had nothing to do with it. Keep these things in mind because there's someone in a higher control than the President or the Congress or the Senate of the United States. And watch very carefully who's behind this. And then it talks about the Krill of Russia. Of course, he, spot, he, he talks about his conversations with um, Pope Francis and the way they're going, the, what they're working toward and the goals they're working toward. And then, of course, many are saying Assad has won. And they said that if Assad won Le Aleppo, the United States would lose total control of what they were trying to do in Syria. And remember, back years ago, the United States wanted to remove Assad. That was the goal. And, of course, Aleppo was a stronghold, the second largest city in Syria, but they've lost that stronghold. Now the goal is no longer inside of what they want. Well, then, moving on, it also talks about NATO. They asked the leader of NATO what he thought about Russia taking control, and he totally ignores the question. He wants nothing to do with it. He doesn't want to make any statement other than we need to remove the leadership of what's going on there right now and have a ceasefire. And then big business. Notice bunker business. It's big business right now. If you'll notice, the man, he's talking about these underground bunkers. People are spending more money on the bunkers in their houses or for their houses than they're actually spending on their houses. But notice what he says. He says, you know, you'd think these people would be crazy that come to you, but they're not. They're business people. And the one thing that gets me, he says, you know, the math all adds up. Armageddon's what it looks like. Of course, Armageddon's a little bit away, but nuclear war is what it looks like. And he makes a comment, you'd rather have it 10 years ahead than five minutes too late. You know, keep these things in mind. Preparation can be a very positive thing for Yahweh's people. And then abortion in Ohio. Keep this in mind. This is very deceptive in what they're doing, but they're trying to pass a bill in Ohio that actually says it's about six weeks. You can tell a heartbeat or you can hear the heartbeat of a child is what they're saying. And once you can hear the heartbeat, Ohio is trying to pass the bill so you can no longer have an abortion in their state. What do you think people are going to do that they detect a heartbeat in and they want an abortion? They're going to go to the next state and they're going to do it. So even though these things, they don't even seem righteous to many, then they're not righteous. They're still talking about murder, murdering children. Watch these things, but keep an eye and listen to how this system is trying to gain control, but watch how it's slipping and it's losing control, and Yahweh is soon going to take control. If we could please go ahead and play the news. Everyone would please stand. I would like to introduce the greatest teacher in the world, the great God in Israel, Abel Hawkins. <laughs> hey, Yahweh. <laughs> I was trying to wake y'all up, but I see you're awake. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> you, may, <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. <laughs> may the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. His protection also. <laughs> uh, that uh, that peace should keep you, keep you through this whole thing that is coming. I'm not saying 100% that it's coming. Don't be disappointed if it don't. Uh, only Yahweh can stop it, I can tell you that, because it's, uh, it's uh, looking very much like 100%. The, uh, the, uh, I was just handed an article, I was showing it to uh, uh, Kohan Elia Howler Hawkins. This uh, says the life on earth is dying uh, I remember years ago, it looked like that, that whether we had nuclear war or not, uh, everything on earth was doomed because of mankind's activities, of course, and now the Catholic Church is using that to build an army to depopulate, which, <laughs> you know, is going to make the worse, uh, earth even worse than that, so... But uh, life on earth, thousands of species cease to exist. Life on earth is dying. If you want to pull that up and get the whole story or disc, 
we may have it for you next Sabbath. Um, I want you to get some of this uh, news in your mind before I go into the sermon. Uh, Indian aggression can lead to nuclear war. And it says uh, Senator Haig on Friday uh, said India's provocations and shelling on the borders and the line of control, LOC, could plunge the entire region into war, which would not be confined to any limited area. <laughs> so so uh, they're, they're expecting the war now. That was India. Russians prepare for the nuclear option. Uh, uh, this was brought out in uh, the news, much news, uh, in the last few weeks. America's missilers, their missilers, the one control of the missiles, stand ready to launch nuclear weapons and pray they won't have to. Uh, how close do you live to a nuke? Uh, I would say, without even reading the article, from 10 minutes to an hour. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, within an hour, it could all be here. But I want you to understand this one now, the, the Mediterranean Dialogue, Rome is the hub. Rome. You know, the, the, the Pope has been given some letters to read to make out like he's uh, against what the West is doing and, and, uh, uh, and, and trying to make out like they shouldn't be forcing their democracy. You know, this is a, this is a laugh. They're trying to make themselves look great and take themselves out of the... Uh, out from the hatred because they know they're hated now and uh, we've shown that they're behind this whole thing this prophecies do but this article here shows it too they're they're the they're the hub for reviewing strategies uh, throughout the earth and the scripture says they're the leader of the nations of the earth in this Mediterranean meeting <laughs> held on uh, December uh, December 1st through 3rd, uh, uh, John Curry takes a break and goes to see, look, this is on the 2nd. The meeting was from 1 through 3. John Curry takes a break on the second day of the meeting and goes to see this man to get the advice from the Vatican. Vatican means, if you want to Google it, <laughs> you'll see Vatican means the divining serpent. The divining serpent. Look at the, start with Exodus with that. <laughs> Exodus, when, when Yahweh pulled Moshe, told him to go up against these gods, I'm going to be with you, he said. Go up against these gods, and I'm going to take a certain group out of Egypt that I sent down there years ago, 400 years ago. Uh, Rwanda Catholic bishops apologize for role in Rwa Rwanda genocide. The Catholic Church now, they're making out like they have nothing to do with these wars that's going on. The Catholic Church in Rwanda has apologized for its role in the 1994 genocide, saying it regrets the actions of those who participated in the massacres. A church statement acknowledged, acknowledged on Sunday its members planned. Its members planned. Now the Pope and the Catholics and the priests had nothing to do with this congregation that planned all of this, or several congregations of Catholics that planned all this. They didn't even know about it. Can you imagine that? And it went on and went on for weeks, this planning. And now they're apologizing for these members just, who just couldn't control themselves and went down and killed 800,000 people. <laughs> and it's almost ironic what the world will believe when the Vatican puts it out to the people trying to gain respect again. U.S. ready to confront Beijing over South China Sea as satellite photos show 
militarization, uh, uh, Russia, USA, and China are prepping for all-out space war. Yes, that's uh, going on, and of course there's more. I think it was Deacon Tovia Greenwich Hawkins brought that out about the space wars and the cost of it, but there's, there's a, a lot of eyes out there in space, a lot of uh, satellites that they want to knock out, and of course Yahweh shows this. In fact, Yahshua himself showed this uh, in, the, um, in, Ma in Matitia 24. The powers of the heavens are going to be shaken uh, quite severely, in fact. Uh, today, <laughs> I was called early this morning and, and given today's date and uh, uh, 12 17, and, and uh, they told me the meaning of it. They, they um, were really rejoicing over this. It's uh, 12 17. Uh, it means a worker for the people. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this is wonderful. Uh, it means uh, a mechanic. Uh, the word mechanic means uh, of or or uh, uh, of or relating to manual work or skill. A manual worker. Uh, my mother used to say, uh, "Where there's a manual, there's a womanal." And <laughs> Uh, standing behind the manual, <laughs> teaching her children, raising her children. <laughs> uh, some of the words she had, you'd never forget. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if that's in the dictionaries today or not, but it should be. <laughs> the, uh, this comes from 1218, uh, the public. It means the public as bound together socially people, uh, an assembly of people gathered together with consent of the law of Yahweh and the mutual benefit, uh, an assembled group of people actively exercising the works written in the Holy Scriptures. <laughs> uh, and it brings another one, 1484, uh, they they call it a race of the of the same uh, with the same habit. If you turn to to uh, Matitia 21 and 42 and 44, the Savior used those words right there. Uh, a race with a with the same all of the same habit, and and because they rejected Yahshua, you know Yahshua was prophesied from. <laughs> From Genesis, and and of course Yada is going to be in charge until until Yada is made a footstool of Yahshua, <laughs> which Yahweh has a plan to turn turn the Leviathan around, and and He's doing it. And these wars, of course, that's His final projection. And that's what we're revealing today, as we're also prophesied to do. But the uh, the uh, uh, Matitia there, he says, "Be you, you've rejected? Have you never heard of uh, uh, the writing of the prophet that said the stone which the builders rejected has become the head?" <laughs> uh, wow, that is that is beautiful. That will. That will take away <laughs> Yahshua. Yahshua, if you could imagine the world being under that leadership right now, uh, it could be turned around in a matter of, uh, 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 well, you couldn't do it now because the world hasn't learned its final lesson, and, and uh, that's what the nuclear war is going to be. It's going to show that he's, his actions from rejecting Yahweh's laws uh, uh, we get the idea and I guess I should straighten it out now but we get the idea from Christianity that that the Israelites who Yahweh took down into Egypt sent down into Egypt the sons of Abraham 
the seed of Abraham. Uh, he said Abraham was perfect, that is, in practicing, in practice. Abraham made mistakes just like you did, just like you're doing, but he kept practicing and practicing and trying to get it perfect, and he did. He, he, uh, he was a perfect man in Yahweh's eyes because he was practicing his laws. He's doing what he said 100%. He proved it even to the fact that he would have sacrificed his son, and, of course, Yahweh did. That's how much he, he uh, cares for you. Well, the, the, they think, though, that, that uh, uh, the Israelites were sent down to Egypt, and they learn Yahweh's laws. <laughs> you know, uh, I know it's the it's, it's, it's stupid it stinks, but <laughs> then they were brought out, they kept Yahweh's laws, and that was what was wrong with them, they kept Yahweh's laws. But then came Yahshua along and did away with the whole mess and started his own, another, another way to life, you know, that's their teaching. They were sent down into Egypt, they were very evil when they were sent down there, the 12 sons. They even sold their own brother into slavery. I don't know why the people can't get these things. When they were in Egypt, they took, they didn't go down there and learn the Coptic religion. They went down there and taught the Coptic religion, God worship. And when they came back out, they were still Coptics, still God worshipers. That's what, that Coptic means Egyptian, but Catholic means God worship. It means universal, which means they worship all the gods in the universe. If you put those scriptures together, that's exactly what it means. They came back out. Yahweh says, Yahshua said, if you'll follow me, you know, I'll free you from this bondage. And they said, we've never been in bondage. Well, of course not. They're the ones that led this thing. They were the leaders of this. <laughs> I don't, they never see the fact that when a man died, one of those is, famous Israelites that went down there, and I'm not going to tell you, I'd like for you to read it for yourselves, but it's in Genesis. But when, they, when, when he died, the whole, it seemed like the whole official governmental group of Egypt followed them out of Egypt and went with them to bury this man where he requested to be buried. <laughs> they had pulled there. They were running the country, the whole country. They were promised their own land of milk and honey, which Yahweh didn't tell them what that milk and honey would be. He told them to eat it after they got there. But they brought them out to train them in Moshe's laws. The laws he gave Moshe. That's the kingdom of Yahweh. You're being taught that here. Yahweh said they didn't learn it. He said they ate, they drank, and they rose up to play. And eventually, they rose up against Moshe. They rejected Moshe. It's written about throughout the Holy Scriptures what they did. The few that were taught these writings, and all of them had the writings. Yeshua, he, he, you know, he quoted from the writings. Uh, one of the apostles uh, passed a man reading, he's sitting in a buggy and reading uh, 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 the Holy Scriptures, which many had the book of Yahweh. And he was reading about Yeshua. <laughs> and the apostle said, Knowest thou what thou readest? And he said, How could I? except someone explain it. Well, he knew enough to know that the knowledge did not come from man. And he couldn't understand it on his own. That's why he sent the book of Israel to Moshe. <laughs> they say Moshe wrote the Bible. No, he wrote part of it. Adam wrote a big part of it. Adam himself, how do you know that? The scripture itself says he did. The scripture himself. Yahweh said he allowed Adam to write these. Try giving names to every animal on earth. 
<laughs> you think he didn't know how to write, but he could give names to every animal on earth? Oh, yeah, he did that in about an hour, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you realize how, how much education this man must have had for that, that tiny chore? And that was one of the tiniest ones. Writing about his own sons, seeing what they were doing, the priest of Yahweh and the priest of Satan. And this great agency that caused his wife to sin. <laughs> All of this stuff was written by sight. Adam knew it and he wrote it down. He was used to write. Yahweh gave him that authority to write. <laughs> yes, Moshe was given the laws. He and Aaron and a, and a whole group was given a kingdom to run. We have the same kingdom here. <laughs> I, I told somebody the other day, uh, uh, Aaron, yeah, we have him here. His name is Michael Sheets now. Michael Sheets Hawkins. <laughs> we got another one, Shaul Hawkins. <laughs> we got another one in the girls' family, Miriam. Her name is Tana. She works at the South Office. I run everything through Tana at that South Office, everything. She's my eyes and ears. She's also a manager, better than, better than Miriam was. She's not going wrong. She's not going off picking her guitar and, and going into La La Land. No, she's doing the work that I assigned her to do. The same as all these other Aaron's <laughs> and Miriam's. <laughs> that should be plain and simple. We got a kingdom of Yahweh, and it's set up the same as, Ab Ab as uh, <laughs> Abraham followed, which was written by Adam. Then Moshe wrote in his in his activities leading these seed of Abraham who was rotten to the core, stiff-necked and rebellious. How many times would Yahweh have to say that before a Christian would believe it? Of course, they never get that deep in the scriptures. They say, oh, that mess is all done away with. <laughs> well, Yahshua didn't say that mess was done away with. And he said, uh, you stiff-necked and rebellious Catholics... Uh, my words are written for you loud and clear. Uh, I have all authority, he says. Let's turn over to Acts 7. Acts 7. The wars are being held back. That's, that's what I showed you to begin with years ago. And only Yahweh can hold this one back. You know, he may do it. You know, it depends on how you take this sermon, I think. In... in uh, in, in uh, Acts, the seventh chapter, Acts 7 and verse 35, Acts 7 and verse 35, we see this man, Israel Hawkett. You see that there in verse 35? Rejected by the world, hated by the world. Well, we see it right here. He had the laws of Yahweh. And verse 35 says, Moshe was rejected. <laughs> He wasn't accepted by these, these people. <laughs> Yahweh had a four-horned altar. I'm not going to cry this time. I've got it. <laughs> in... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yahweh had a four-horned altar of gold that is going to bring forth what none of us could do and Yahweh predicted it, and he said, this four-horned altar, eventually I'm going to chop its horns off. But on it, is going, you're going to be held. You Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you heads of Jacob, you elders of Israel, you God-worshippers. Yes, that's what he tells them here, too. <laughs> But he tells them that throughout the Holy Scriptures. And he said, he said, this four-horned altar right here is predicting. It's sitting right here on the sea of glass for me to look at and see the activities that is going on. And Yahshua said, upon you all the blood from Abel, righteous Abel, he called him. That was the Savior calling him righteous Abel. 
and said, All the blood of righteous from the righteous Abel, he is the start of the tree of life. Remember, Abel, he was the first priest of Yahweh. He's the one that told Cain, Your way is not acceptable. It's going to bring war, continual war. You're going to bring curses upon yourself. The ground and the earth is going to be cursed. All these things that Abel told Cain, the prophets spoke about later <laughs> and said, this is going to be your downfall. But Abel told Cain this very thing in the beginning. And no one notices it. Why? You got to have help. No matter how damn smart you think you are, you got to have help. <laughs> and Yahweh said, Yahweh said, who will I teach knowledge? Who am I going to teach it to? And then he tells you who he's going to teach it to and says, go there. Go there and learn. Don't go there and try to throw your weight around and reject your counselors, your overseers, your, your, uh, your captains over tens, your captains over fifties. <laughs> Don't go there objecting to the, what they're trying to teach you. We were talking about marriage counseling this week and how far we're falling short. I said, when a man asks for a wife, you know, our counselors, they take that man. They don't ask who he's going to marry. He don't even know who he's going to marry. Because they got to find out what, what woman is suitable for this man. Can he afford it? Can he get along with her after he takes her as a wife? And so much teaching goes behind this counseling right here. Getting that man prepared and finding out who would best suit to fit in this household with this man. That's what counseling is for. It's to help the man. <laughs> if he doesn't get it, they're just like the world. They wind up in divorce. And we've had people do that. We've had people reject counseling. And, and they prove, they should have proved to themselves what they got themselves into. <laughs> you got it, Dave? I, I was stalling until you got finished there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. That's it. Well, here in, in Acts now, the seventh chapter, in verse 35, he says, This Moshe, whom they rejected, See, they didn't accept Moshe. They didn't accept his laws. Yahshua said this several times and said, because of that, the kingdom is going to be taken away from you. And what you have brought, this murder that you have brought, is reaches all the way back to Abel. His blood is going to be upon your head. And, and, and it's stacked up high right now. The 12 tribes of Israel, the ones that, that started calling themselves in Yahshua's day, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians. What people don't know today, they're called the quartet. And they started way back there. Yahweh has a picture of them with four horns sitting on a golden altar. <laughs> and he's going to chop those horns off, the killing power of you Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians. He's going to chop your horns off with nuclear burning. And that's what we're facing right now. In Acts 7.35, they rejected Moshe. And, and in verse, uh, verse 39, verse 39, he said, From our, from our fathers, uh, whom our fathers would not obey, but they rejected him, so in their hearts, where did they turn? <laughs> Coptic. Back to Coptic. Coptic means Egypt. Catholic means God worship, as you see further down there. They're the Coptic Catholics that came out of Egypt. Egyptian Catholics. Egyptian God worshipers. Whom our fathers would not obey, so they turned, turned back to Egypt. Look at verse, uh, verse 40, saying, uh, make us gods. 
That's what they're still doing today. They're making themselves gods to rise up and play. They made, they made the image of the calf in those days and offer sacrifices to the gods and rejoiced in the works of their hands. Remember that word calf. We got to cover it later in detail to show you what this represents because it represents actually the four horns of the golden altar. Then Yahweh turned and gave them over to God to worship the host of heaven, the universe. We're universal. That's what Catholic means. They're worshiping the host of heaven. The host of heaven is the gods that Yahweh says he counsels and says you should be doing this and that. Don't forget these scriptures. It's here a little and there a little. There's no way you could put it together by yourself. You, that mankind, scholars have begged and, and, and shuffled through these papers <laughs> and never could understand, but they wanted to understand. They wanted to understand who the branch was, but they couldn't understand it. It wasn't time, and it had to be brought. Who did Yahweh say would tell it? Two witnesses. I'm going to give them two witnesses that will tell this in the last day. They sacrificed. Was he says, was it to me, verse 42, was it to me you sacrificed? Do you think I, I thought that you were sacrificing to me? <laughs> your, your sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years? For 40 years they were sacrificing to gods, not to Yahweh. O house of Israel, no, but you lifted up your idolatrous temple, your house, the house of the gods, of, of Molech, your gods, of Chan, your star god, the, god, the star of your god uh, El, uh, meaning Lord, of course, which you made for yourselves, and I will carry you beyond Babylon, meaning Rome, of course, the seven hills of Rome. The law was first given through Moshe, to the Israelites. That's not true. <laughs> that's what they say. But that's not true. Abraham had Yahweh's laws. They had the laws. They didn't want to obey the laws. They were a bunch of stiff-necked, rebellious sons that had the opportunity but when they went to Egypt, they worshiped gods the same as they did when they came out of Egypt. Well, today, we see wars as a result of this. Yahweh showed us in Genesis 4 what the deception in Genesis 3 would bring. Genesis 3 was, follow these gods. This is the more desirable way. Kill your enemy. That's exactly what they're trying to do. 800,000 people. The Catholic Church says we apologize for that. We had nothing to do with it. It was just our congregation got out of hand. The hatred got out of hand. Well, Yahweh says to Cain, why are you angry? Can't you see why you're angry? If you would keep my laws, you wouldn't be angry. Well, that has come down to the whole world today. And now we're seeing wars everywhere. We see wars prophesied in, in the year 96 A.Y. <laughs> 96 A.Y. 1920 year, 1920 years ago, in that fourth part of the earth, that's home to the Euphrates River. We see that in prophecy that was written 1,920 years ago. Look at chapter 9, Revelations 9. Now take note here. You might put a note there that that four horns, that's the four horns of the golden altar, and that's the four they call quartet today. <laughs> quartet today. Prophesied 1,900 years ago, but it's a quartet that he's speaking of in this time period that wasn't even established until, <laughs> do you remember the dates? Well, you should. And the six Moloch sounded, 
Verse, verse 13, the sixth Moloch sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which meaning this thing can speak. We get a, getting a message from this four, four horns of the golden altar. Well, what you're getting a message from is the quartet in this time period. But this is the last days right here, the last generation, as Yahshua said, and we're in the last part of this last generation. Saying, in the, saying to the sixth Moloch, which had the trumpet, loose the, loose the, so the sixth Moloch and the seventh Moloch is both alive in this time period of this four horns of the golden altar, the quartet. The four, it says loose, saying to the sixth Moloch, which had the trumpet, the trumpeter, loose the four angels, are four horns, four horns, loose the quartet, who are bound to end the great river Euphrates. Verse 15 shows to kill a third part of men. Around the great river Euphrates, verse 14, to kill a third part of man, verse 15, loose them so the quartet can kill. I'm holding it back. But you loose them now so they can kill, kill, kill. 800,000 people? <laughs> That's just in one killing. It's every day now. Every day. And the last Moloch sounded, verse 13, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before Yahweh. If you remember, I pointed this out to you and painted a picture. They have it in Washington in their, in their, where all their intelligence gets together and they have this sea of glass and they have boats here, 16, 1,600 uh, 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 cannon, uh, 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 what do they call them? <laughs> what? Tanks. Tanks that carry big weapons. 1,600 on the way to overseas, <laughs> 1,600. I got the article here somewhere. Uh, and then after that, we see an article on several thousand troops being sent to. Okay, U.S. troops rush to Poland. U.S. troops rush to Poland. 4,000 U.S. troops rush to Poland. U.S. to ship 1,600 tanks to Dutch Army. To Dutch Army. A total of 1,600 vehicles are, are due to be stored at a six-warehouse six complex in the southwestern village and tells where they're going. Now that's what's going right now. These, this date is 16, December 16. This date is December 14. Now that's what's taking place right now. Well, here in the scripture now, speaking to you and me, the house of Yahweh, he says, and the last Moloch sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar. This is a quartet, and we're hearing and even seeing in print what the quartet is doing and what the scripture says, said 2,000 years ago almost that they were going to do in and around the great river Euphrates. It didn't start until that time. If you remember the 911, the, two, the towers, the destruction of them. Then later comes the quartet. Well, here's the four horns of the golden altar now being put in the last day's prophecy. And we're hearing this quartet saying, we're going to bring peace. <laughs> well, it's almost a laugh, I know. We're going to bring peace. Peace is the furthest thing from them. 
sang to the last moloch, which had the trumpet of Yahweh, loose the four, loose these four, the quartet, the, the horns of the golden altar, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. It has not turned nuclear yet. Now, we see, we see the first strike. I brought that out in the book where Yahweh gave us the date, September the 12th, 2006. September the 12th, 2006. And I said the wars are going to start right here. And then I also brought out the scripture that Yahweh could postpone that. There was a strike on that day, and the people who get that book now get these letters. I mean, the news article showing the strike hit a nuclear plant in Syria. I don't know if you remember that, but it did. A strike, they struck on the very day that Yahweh gave, which was September 12, 2006. The war was held back by Yahweh. As was said in 96, 96 AY, it was said that Yahweh would hold back that war, and verse chapter 7 of Revelation shows that very same thing. Revelations chapter 7, the first four verses there shows the war will be held back. And then in chapter 9, we see in 13 and 14, Yahweh says, loose the four horns of the golden altar. Let them go to work with their killing, which we did from the house of Yahweh. We loosed them and they started killing, where a third part of man will be killed over that fourth part of the earth. That was the orders given. Well, I told you the four horns of the, of the golden altar is the quartet. Now, let's go to chapter 4 now of Revelations, chapter 4, and look at this quartet again. Chapter 4 and verse 5. And out of the throne, he saw he was, he was saying, come here and I'll show you what's going to take place. Come here. I will show you. Well, Yahweh shows that seventh. Moloch is the one that's showing. Yahweh, Yahshua, the high priest over the house of Yahweh, you've got to get all these scriptures, is actually beholding, guiding, directing, teaching, instructing the seventh Moloch, as we will see here in this, this few verses. And out of the throne, this is Revelations 4, verse 5, out of the throne, this is the sea of glass that he's showing here and if you can imagine it in your mind Yahweh's throne and this sea of glass with the earth the whole earth outlined here in front of him like a map and he sees everything that's going on right there in front of him including the altar that he gave the four horns of the golden altar that he gave to Moshe to write yes Moshe wrote that he gave it to him. So Moshe was in, an inspired writer called by Yahweh who was rejected by the four horns of the golden altar and is still being rejected. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. I've explained that thoroughly in the book. The seven lamps of fire burning, seven lamps, if you remember, Revelations 11 now shows we're the last ones. And I will give power to my two witnesses, authority to them, and they will foretell this. Isaiah 44 says, let them foretell them. Revelation says, now I will give, I will give power to them, and they will foretell these prophecies. The seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which signifies and represents the complete plan of Yahweh. The complete plan, look to, just hold your place right there. Hold your finger on it and turn over to chapter 10. 
chapter 10, and look at verse 7. In the days, and this is the last days, by the way, that Yahshua said, in the days of the voice of the seventh trumpet, when he will begin to sound, this great secret of Yahweh will be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. Remember, Moshe, I will have no work unless it's prophesied. Other than that, prophesy. Now back to, to Revelations 4 and look at verse 6. And, be, and before the throne there was this sea of glass like crystal in the midst of the throne and surrounding the throne and, and surrounding the throne were four, were the quartet, the quartet in this time period which is also the four horns of the golden altar representing, that represents the quartet, been there since the days of Moshe. But no one knew who it was. No one knew what this, this four horns of the golden altar was for, what it represented. They just now found out in this generation by our preaching what the seven lamp lampstand represents. Yes. <laughs> that it represents witnesses. And by the way, they're, they're getting a lot of uh, questions about it, so they're listening <laughs> to the house. This week I saw a preacher, uh, I was watching the news, and no, I turned it on for one thing, and the preacher was on that channel, and, uh, and I listened to a few words, and he said, there's not going to be a great tribulation. That great tribulation took place when they killed Jesus and hung him on the, on the cross. <laughs> but he read, he read Daniel 12 and verse 4, talking about the last day's house of Yahweh, but he couldn't understand it. He said, we still don't know who this character is, <laughs> who these other two are, but we will find out, you know, <laughs> Jesus will show us well, surrounding the, the four living creatures, full of eyes before and behind. Yes, they have eyes all over the world. The radar gives them those eyes. And even in the heavens. Now, verse 7. And the first creature uh, was like a lion. Now, here you see the whole thing, their whole character in this one, one simple verse. You see... <laughs> You see the, the, the calf, that's the God worship. See, it's like a lion, a roaring lion. Now you see this, you start with this in Genesis 49, 10. Yada, the roaring lion. <laughs> you see these creatures, that, that they're all like this. This, uh, this is a combination of their character and their integrity. And the first, first creature was like a lion, and the second creature was like the golden calf. Remember, they created the golden calf in Moshe's day. This is the same group, and Moshe gave them this four-horned golden altar to show what they would do, what they're going to do in the last day, as their father told them in Genesis 49. You're not going to be righteous. You're going to bring hell on this earth. And all, yeah, all your complete character is going to be played out in the last days. And he plainly said that in the first, in the first uh, uh, verse of four, chapter 49 of Genesis. You see the calf. Then the third creature, a face like a man. So all of this is coming from mankind. And the fourth creature, he develops wings. That's what we see today. They can fly, and they can send their missiles flying <laughs> through the air. Let's go to chapter 5 and look at verse, start with verse 5. I have it planned to come back to this and, and get into it in more detail. I've got to take more things out, but you've got to, it's written here a little and there a little, so... I don't want to throw your mind off of what you're seeing here. The quartet and its character, led by the hub, as they is called, the Vatican, the divining serpent, who has made these plans 
to actually destroy mankind, heaven and earth. Destroy mankind, heaven and earth. I don't see a clock. Can I just go till I see one or <laughs> what? what <do> <laughs> uh, I think somebody took it down. Uh, praise y'all way for phones. I'll, oh, no, I've got plenty of time left. Okay. <laughs> praise y'all. <laughs> My phone stopped, too. <laughs> so we're set for the day, I think. Okay. In chapter, chapter 5 and verse 5, we see, And, and, and one of the elders uh, said to me, do, uh, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Yada, the root of David, uh, uh, has overcome to open the scrolls to release the seven seals. So who's doing this, and who is he doing it for? Remember, Zechariah 6, let them work together. They'll be working together. Hebrews 10.21, high priest over the house of Yahweh. What's he teaching? The laws of Yahweh, verse 16. <laughs> yes, it's all given there. Here a little and there a little. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne... And the four, the four horn golden altar now is sitting there, which represents the quartet, the four living creatures. In the midst of the elders stood a lamb. <laughs> that is Yahshua, as though it had been slain, having complete power, complete knowledge, complete understanding. If you remember now, that's all given to Yahshua, and he's giving it to his house in these last days. Complete, and this, this is a complete plan of Yahweh. Verse 7, And he came and took the scrolls out of the right hand of him who sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures... The 24 elders, all of them standing together in this sea of glass, fell down before the Lamb. That's what's going to be the end of this now. The, the, the horns are going to be chopped off. The altar is still going to be there. Each one of them having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang as it were a song. You are worthy, O Yahweh. Well, here's where they start turning, start turning to Yahweh. And they praise the saints. Let's look back to, remember, complete power, complete understanding. Look back to Yalkanon, the fifth chapter. Yalkanon, this is our high priest now that's, that was never convicted of any sin, died, called up to, that throne where we see him now by the side of Yahweh and standing at the side of Yahweh on this sea of glass. In chapter 5 of, ya of Yachanan, chapter 5, look at verse 22. For the Father does not judge any man, but his co has committed all judgment to the Son. <laughs> the Son is committing judgment to his house. We work together, side by side. Look at, uh, look at, look at chapter 5 and verse 27. And, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. That was shown to us in Revelations just a minute ago. Man had the face of a man. The character has the face of a man, roars like a lion, <laughs> gores with the horns. That was verse 27, authority to execute Yahweh's judgments. Look at chapter, at uh, Matithia now, Matithia 21. Matithia 21. If you remember, one of our deacons brought a sermon about them giving power to the, the uh, uh, priest to forgive uh, sins. Uh, 
that was the first time uh, they ever admitted sin and that it is sin. Of course, it makes no difference what they say. They could forgive sin, but that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean life. You people in the radio land and TV land, uh, you can forgive sin, but you can't make a person worthy of the kingdom just by saying, I forgive your sins. And that's what the Catholic Church is trying to pretend, that they are giving you eternal life. But they're liars, remember? That's what, that's what the Savior himself said. He said they're liars. She's a liar, been a liar from the beginning. She'll tell you you have eternal life. Of course, that's what they're doing. That's what she said to Eve. You won't die. She was lying, the scripture said. She deceived Eve into thinking she wouldn't die. All the Masons in the world are deceived right now, thinking they're not going to die, and they sign this thing saying they have an immortal soul. And, of course, the scripture shows that they won't, that, they, that, that this means nothing, that Yahweh can destroy or never rise again. It takes Yahweh to do this, and certainly we won't go against his will when, when we're giving the power to resurrect we won't go against Yahweh's will and resurrect someone that has not followed the laws of Yahweh. They would be causing trouble in the kingdom, and that is a no-no. Well, here now in, in chapter 21 of Matitia, Matitia 21, and look, look at verse 42. Yahshua said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? Which means there's a book of scriptures. <laughs> Yes, written by Adam, a lot of them, and then Abel. And they were still giving answers at Abel thousands of years later. At Abel, written by Abel and Adam. The stone which the builders rejected has become the headstone of the corner. This is Yahweh's doing. It's a marvelous, it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of Yahweh, this is his judgment. Yeshua's judgment. He has taken judgment, authority. Therefore, I say to you, <laughs> the kingdom of Yahweh will be taken from you and given to a people of the same habit, but from a foreign land. A foreign land. Now, this is a prophecy here written 2,000 years ago to come to pass in this time period Another prophecy saying, in the last days I will establish my house. And then he said, this is a generation. And that generation won't pass away till this earth is burned, the sun darkened, and so forth. So he says, he's taken it away from Yada. He's the, he's the one that holds the scepter, and his brothers are praising him. How are they praising him? Sodomy. Sodomy, bestiality, fornication, adultery, war, and killing. That's how they're praising Yada. The quartet, they're praising the quartet right now. Each country has its own pulls and own praises, and each country is, rep is represented by one of those four. Even Russia is one of those four. From the foreign land, from a foreign land, and they will bring forth the fruits of it. Work, labor, do the work, learn, get involved in the teaching, the classes. Whosoever, whosoever falls on this stone will be broken, and whomsoever it falls, it will ground him to powder. This, is, this right here is showing that at the second death, there is no resurrection. There'll be ground to powder. You'll be ashes under your feet. They will not be resurrected after that. Now, when the chief priest and the Pharisees heard his parable, this was the quartet again now, coming down to our day, still representing killing and murdering. Notice there, they, they wanted to kill him right then and there. You see that? That was, that was following the way of Cain. Hebrews 10, I quoted that a while ago. Hebrews 10, that's, uh, that's Yahshua, our high priest. Well, let's turn to it. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. 
And remember, Yahshua in the middle of the throne, in the, in the uh, sea of glass, opening the seals for his house, let them, his house, foretell them, remember, all of these scriptures have to be combined before you can understand Yahweh's plan. There's, there's no way you can do it on your own. You could follow, you could read till your, uh, till your hair falls out and your eyes go blind. But if you don't get involved where Yahweh tells you to and do what Yahweh tells you to do and read what he tells you to read, you won't understand. And slowly you'll be pulled away. And you'll get to wondering why you were here to, here to begin with. Well, 1021, having a high priest over the house of Yahweh, it starts out now over here in chapter 1 telling about this man and how he overcame. And he says, he says, to which of the Malachim did he ever make this promise? Well, he doesn't. He's the son of man. And Yahshua says, because I'm the son of man. He said, I was given this authority, the Son of Man. Verse 21, now he's high priest. He never sinned. He had a true heart. Let us draw near with a true heart, is verse 22. And look back to verse 16, what he's teaching there. He's putting it in our hearts and in our mind. You know how he does this? If you could see... Of course, we're being able to see the results of sin right now, big time, because of the news media, uh, the pictures that are taken, the bombs that are being dropped, and no regret. Uh, it's like uh, it's like they don't. Th there's there's no curing for the people they're killing at all, even small children. Uh, bombing the hospitals and so forth. Well, we're seeing this. So then we're seeing the laws and we're seeing how perfect they are with no retaliation, no fighting, no stealing, uh, no molesting of any kind. All of that is being put into your heart right now as the perfect way to live. And this is the only thing that will bring peace. Praise Yahweh. Well, that was verse 16 now, Yahshua. And, and let's go back now because he, he shows us his judgment. Remember, his, all judgment is given unto him. And this is his judgment right here, Yahshua's judgment. In the last chapter of Revelations, and he says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to, get, to give every man according as his work will be. I'm the first and the last. This is Revelations 22, 13. I'm the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who keep his laws. Blessed. They're the only ones that have eternal life. Yes. Cain told Abel. Cain told Abel he was going to kill him. Abel told Cain... Your ways are not acceptable. Now, at this time, it was not. At this time, there was a great population on earth. They had been multiplying. Try to, try to figure out if Adam and Eve had children. Those children, by the time they were 16, probably, were bearing children. By the time those were 16, they were bearing children. So it kept multiplying. And the way that we know, the way that I know how many people came out of the land of Egypt was because they had an army of a certain age group. And it gives you the number. It don't tell you how many came out of Egypt, but it tells you the number of the army. You can take that and figure how many people had to be coming out of Egypt at that time, which was about three million, to supply that army of so many thousand. Do this, and you'll see how many people was alive when, <laughs> when the flood came. 
and these these people, even at the 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 time that Cain and Abel lived, by the time he killed Abel, it was I think about a hundred and twenty eight years. So even if Cain had children each year, or maybe more, even, even with him, and that would be multiplying, but you had the others, his children, all multiplying too for that same, not the same length of time, but at least a length of time. Try to figure that up. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard, but if you're a mathematician, you can. Uh, I think I figured it at one time, but I don't know what Bible I wrote it down in, <laughs> so, but I may find it again later. But anyway, you can get the, the answer in that way and know that this was, each one of these men was teaching, and they had a congregation, Abel and Cain. Yahweh was blessing Abel. Cain was being blessed with misery and anger. And Abel was not the first man that Cain killed. I don't believe it was because that was his pattern. And he didn't kill Abel till 128 years <laughs> at Bath. So this, this was a long time in multiplying. And, and Abel had a huge congregation that was following him. And Abel told Cain, your ways are not acceptable to Yahweh. And that's the reason he killed him. Well, here now, Yahshua, which came, by the way, of Galilee, <laughs> and that's where they were brought to, to be trained. That is, the 12 tribes of Israel. The Coptic Catholic religion was brought out of Egypt. It wasn't brought out of bondage, and Yahshua showed them. Bondage is sin. If you sin, you're in bondage to sin. And that's what he told them, and they hated him for it. They said, we've never been in bondage. They were referring to slavery. They were the ones that's creating this evil thing they call slavery. It wasn't, it wasn't by the laws of Yahweh, like a group of people working in agreement to fulfill or accomplish a certain goal. It was the bondage that he was speaking of was sickness, disease, uh, Wars, fighting. If you remember, Yahshua, I mean, uh, Moshe saw them fighting among themselves. Well, they were in bondage to sin. And Yahshua told them this. I know that you're Abraham's seed. I know that. But if you truly was like Abraham, you would not be wanting to kill me. That's what he said. So if you put that all together, you can see that Sin brings on hatred and killing, wars, and so forth. And Yahweh said, I'm going to let this go, and nothing will be withheld from them. The only thing that he got guarded was his own special work of, from, from Noah. And, of course, Noah, he had Ham, Ham went down to Egypt and multiplied, and then Yahweh sent his 12 tribes, 12 people, 12 patriarchs into Egypt, and they multiplied, but they're the ones that took the religion there. They're the ones that taught the Coptic, Coptic Catholic, and they're still there. In fact, when, when they brought them out of Egypt, many of them went back to Egypt, later turn, turned and actually went back and took over the land. Well, here is Yahshua now, who was brought out of this same mess of, 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 of a group, of, a small group of people who didn't want to rise up and play and eat and drink and, and, uh, and then rise up to play, but learned the words of Yahweh. So Yahshua, his family that he was born from, taught him. Yahshua came with a head full of of knowledge of the scriptures. The others came from the school that Cush invented, 
the Nimrod school of Cush, they came with a conquering spirit, terrorism, like you're seeing today in the world. That was the majority that came. Later, when, when the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Essenes were taken beyond Babylon, then, of course, they wanted to kill everyone that kept, they wanted to kill just like Abel. They wanted to kill everyone that was like Abel, like they killed Yachanan, like they killed Yahshua Messiah. So they wanted to kill everyone, and they did. They tried to. Thousands, at least a million, I'd say three million people came to Jerusalem to keep that feast when Titus and 30,000 sharp swords came after them to slaughter them, take their, take, uh, their wealth, and, and of course uh, destroy the city and, ta and remove the stones, remove the stones. I say they're in Egypt, uh, they're in uh, Italy right now, in Rome. Well, here, out of that group now came Yahshua, a sinless man, whom Yah Yahweh had predicted, and he kept quoting scripture and says, have you never read in the scriptures? Haven't you read in the scriptures this or that? I tell you, he said, I tell you before it takes place what's going to take place, so when it takes place, you will believe that I am he who Yahweh sent. Got that? Praise Yahweh. Well, that was Yahshua, of course. Well, now we are facing big-time war. Here is his judgment. He says, Blessed are those who keep his laws, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, here outside you see the Coptic Catholic religion outside. It's described to a T right here in this, in this uh, uh, verse. Just like it was described, <laughs> the quartet was described in the verse I showed you a while ago in chapter 4. Just as it was described, you see the, the Coptic Catholic religion and what they teach. They make out like they're against sin, but they're not against sin. They claim they forgave all these people, these women who had abortions. Well, they could say they forgave them. They didn't tell them to repent and sin no more. They just said they forgave them. He gave the priest power to forgive them or the cardinals or, or the dishwasher or the guy that mops the floor, cleans the toilets, they all got power now to forgive. <laughs> does that stop the problem? No, no, neither does it bring eternal life. In fact, those women that have abortions and have an abortion, they're not, at, but they're not at fault for this. They're doing what they've been trained to do. Just like the woman that was brought before Yahshua for adultery. She was doing what she was trained to do by the Coptic Catholic religion, Sadducees, Essenes, Pharisees, Herodians. That group, she was trained for that, and she was doing it. They were the ones that's guilty. On them is the blood, on their heads. Not the blood of the woman that, that killed this baby, but the ones that taught her. Let them be taught. Let them not cast a stone until they can overcome sin themselves. That's what Yahshua told you. Who, he who's without sin, let him be the first to cast the stone. The woman was innocent. After Yahshua told her, sin no more, she probably did. She probably quit sinning. But you've got to be taught before you can quit. For that, you go to the priest. Let's read this first. For outside are dogs. This is two-legged dogs. They're called sodomites. If you look it up, it's, 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 it means sodomy. That's what, that's what the Catholic Church does. That's what they're bringing forth. That's what they brought forth in the Supreme Court. Surely anyone can see what they're teaching. They're the hub of this whole religious system. 
All the religions of the world have been pulled into this, this control that they have over the world. And on them, Yahshua said, the blood, even as far back as Abel, is on your system. <laughs> it's held on your head. You're following this system, so you're guilty as your fathers before you were guilty. The Roman Catholic Church knows that this is not being taught. They're saying don't, don't do it, but they're not teaching the laws of Yahweh that forbid it. Not even to commit murder. They say, oh no, war is just. Well, they're the divining serpent that wants to get rid of mankind. That's the reason they say war is just. They're training man to go to war and kill himself. The laws of Yahweh are going to stand unless heaven and earth can be destroyed by Satan. Heaven and earth cannot be destroyed by Satan. Yahweh says it won't. He says, I'm going to keep you safe. Well, here now, is, is, he, he, says, he says, outside are, are dogs, sorcerers, that's pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, brother, drugs that they're finding out more and more every day is causing sickness, disease, and spreading it. Stop doing, stop breaking the laws. Stop breaking the laws and start practicing health and your body will start getting healthy. At least to us, till you run out of the time that Yahweh has allotted you. For outside are dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, the, the whoremongers that includes baby killers, adultery, fornication, abortion, murderers, and worshipers of gods. These are all the worshipers of gods. This is where it comes from. Genesis 3, 5, be like the gods. It's more desirable, and that's exactly what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Everyone who professes to love yet practices breaking the law. I, Yahshua, notice, have sent my... Do you see that? <laughs> and also in the house of Yahweh. The congregation in the house of Yahweh. Why did they leave that out? <laughs> well, go to... to, go to uh, let me see if I have time... Um, 6.33, I'll just quote this. Yahshua said, this is his judgment. Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness. Be turning over to, to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the, the 12th chapter. Deuteronomy 12. Now, this is Yahweh, Yahshua's judgment. All judgment, all authority now is, be pla is placed in the hands of Yahshua. He's taken... Right now, just over the house of Yahweh now. He's high priest over the house of Yahweh. Yada is high priest over the house of the God. Yahshua is high priest over the house of Yahweh. Yahshua says the gates of hell will not prevail against him, against his house this time. In, in, uh, in Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, let me find it here, verse 5, he says, but you are to seek the habitation of Yahweh. Yahshua, remember, that's what he said. Matthew 6.33, seek first. <laughs> seek first. That doesn't mean it's not talking about get a job, go play, go to the world. He says, come out of the world and be you separate. That's what he's telling you. Come out of the world and be you separate. How much plainer can that get? Well, see... The ones that rejected Moshe, they ate, they drank, and rose up to play. We were talking what a big business stick gathering was. When Yahweh said to Moshe, why is this man operating this business out here of gathering sticks on the Sabbath? That was not someone that was just picking up a stick or a few sticks to start him apart to cook him a meal. It was a business, and it was a huge business for about three million people at that time, but were multiplying daily. These people had gobs of employees paying high prices. <laughs> 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 
Well, that was a huge business. You know, cow dung that was brought with them, goat pills, donkey dung, those were high business too because you could burn them. They were not as, not, not as expensive as the sticks were. They were a cheaper way of fire, use it, you know, to cook meals with, but they, they were usable. But this was a big business. Yes, they had all kinds of businesses. If you look at the refugees right now coming out of these places, they get to a place and they settle in a refugee camp. They put them in this camp. Right away, businesses are started, mostly to feed these people, but, uh, but, but businesses are started inside. Then the people, <laughs> the people who claim ownership of this land, the governments, then they saw the businesses of the refugees. This is true. This is taking place right now. And they saw how much money they was making. They actually had people coming from the people that said they owned the land over to the refugees to buy food because their food was delicious and they were offering it. <laughs> but the government took it away from them. When they saw the business they were creating, they scattered them out then. And they took their business away from them and sent it back to the town that, was, uh, that they had control of and taxes over. They didn't have any taxes over the refugees. Well, anyway, Yahweh says, seek the habitation. Yahshua says, seek it first. Seek this first. And all these things will be added unto you. I'll give you jobs of stick gathering, dung gathering, anything you want later. But seek my kingdom now, right now. <laughs> Repent of your past. Repent of your past and seek it now. But you are to seek the habitation of Yahweh. That's the house of Yahweh, habitation. It's also the kingdom of Yahweh. That's the kingdom of Yahweh given to Moshe, given to, to uh, Abel, uh, uh, give, given to Abraham. The kingdom of Yahweh, seek it first. Seek the habitation, the house of Yahweh, the place which Yahweh, your father, shall choose out of all your tribes to establish his name. That, that right there is already in motion right now, fulfilling Isaiah 2 and Micah 4. In, in uh, go to Deuteronomy 17, I believe it is. Deuteronomy 17. Get this in your mind. Agree to it. Agree to Yahweh never to break it again. Deuteronomy 17. The four horns of the golden altar will not do it now, but they're going to repent later after that, after that religion is chopped off. According to the law, verse 11. Deuteronomy 17, verse 11. According to the law, they teach. Uh, go back to verse 9. Go to the priest who are Levites when at his house. Seek first his habitation. Go to the priest there, the Levites, and the, and the judges uh, who is in office at that time. As for the decision, they will give you the sentence of judgment. You must act according to the sentence of some of my scripture is fading out. The word, the letters are fading. The sentence they pro pronounce for you at the place Yahweh chooses, at his house. Be careful to do all they order you to do. Be very careful to do what your counselors tell you. Answer the questions. Do what, answer the questions that they asked you. And then let them teach you what to do. Don't make up your mind in advance and say, well, I I'm, I'm just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> no, that's not the way you do it. Go there and ask. And according, verse 11, to the law, to the law Yahweh gives us now, that they, they teach you, and according to the decisions. According to the decision. Yes, you have the law, and then you have the decision. 
go chop wood, go milk goats, <laughs> go gather the eggs, be honest with the eggs, be honest with the milk, be honest with the feed, be honest. I put the scripture in, don't be sure, be sure and use just scales. Well, just scales? That would knock the world out of business today. All the cheating that goes on in the world is slowly being revealed to you, you know, through the news and so forth, and some of it's uh, even firsthand. According to the law and according to the decision they give you, you shall do. You must not turn aside to the right. Here's another law. You see that law? <laughs> You must not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from that sentence. I think if you keep this in mind, you're probably, let's go back to, to uh, Revelation chapter 9. I'm, I'm thinking if you agree with everything I say here today and you've told Yahweh you're sorry, I'm thinking maybe these wars, only Yahweh can hold them back. And he may do it. Revelations, um, Revelations nine. Re remember the the uh, um, the four horns here. Revelations nine. Um, Revelations nine and verse thirteen. This is what we're seeing right here taking place. In Revelations 13, here's the four horns of the golden altar. Loose these, this quartet that's bound for this killing, this great killing that is to take place. If you, if you uh, and you notice that's around the great river Euphrates, verse 14, the great river Euphrates, and, and in verse 15, the third part of man. Well, that is proceeding right now. That's in action. We can see it. We can see them dying. We can see them getting bombed. As Psalms 91 says, you will see this. There's never been a time in history that you could see that until now. You know, it could take place a few miles from you, all this killing, like Jerusalem when it was killed and there was no broadcasting. The news was sent out by carrier. So, but now you can actually see it taking place with the great satellites we have and the cameras that, that are taking place. They can see where the bombs are landing, where they explode, what kind of bomb it is, and so forth. We've shown it. We're showing it to you every Sabbath. Notice the third part of man is killed. But now look on down and you'll see at verse... Uh, Verse 20, now that third part of man, we're trying to keep up with that right now. It's, it hasn't reached it that we can see. But it says, uh, verse 20, he says, And the rest of the men who were not killed of these plagues still did not repent. Now, if you compare now, get these, if you compare Malachia 4, you'll see that the evil the wicked are going to die in this. But they haven't been killed here. So there's another war following this. Now you see the nuclear bomb is going to be used here. You see that in verse 17. In this third part of the fourth part of the earth, around the great river Euphrates, you see in verse 17 the colors of this nuclear power is going to be used to kill it hasn't, it's not being used yet, <laughs> except in a smaller way, but not to the extent that it's going to be here. And then after that third part, a third part of man is killed there with these, with hunger, and with sickness and disease. The colors there show you the nuclear bomb. This is in the first books, uh, Mark of the Beast. Uh, now, verse 20, and the rest of the men who were not killed. So there's still evil, wicked men here that won't repent. 
that haven't been killed in this first part. So what we're facing after this one right here, we're facing the one that burns the earth in an hour. Go over to, to Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24, and you'll see that this comes up, up on the Isaiah 24, found on page 544. You'll see here that this comes upon the, upon the wings of this first wars that are taking place. We see them taking place right now. Isn't it strange that that fourth part of the earth is the one that's receiving all the war right now? Do you notice that? That fourth part of the earth, just like you always said, 2,000 years ago he wrote this. <laughs> in 96 A.Y., well, here in, Ma in, in Isaiah now, 24, in verse 2, you see the priest, second line of verse 2, you see the priest is going to destroy the priest and the people. And verse 6 says, because of this, that is not keeping the law, transgressing the law, that's the reason I'm harping on you, don't transgress the law. Be firm in this. Repent and sin no more. <laughs> Tell Yahweh you're sorry. Tell Yahweh to help you, to guide you, to inspire you, to, to not, not sin, not touch it. Well, because of this, the curse, because of sin, transgression of the laws, you see that? That's the reason no sins are going to be allowed in the kingdom. Because of sin, Abel told Cain, because of your sins, you're not acceptable for Yahweh's kingdom. Noah told the whole world that. And look how many were so saved in Noah's time. All that time, clear up to Noah, and one family saved. And from Noah came Ham, who established Egypt, that land, settled there. And then come the big influx of the 12 tribes, <laughs> that is the 12 patriarchs, who multiplied, took over, Yes, they took over Egypt. You can't get anything else out of it if you'll just read what he says. They actually took over that land. The whole thing was given to Yasa. They trusted him. They said, you can see the future. But they were not Yahweh followers. <laughs> Never were. Moshe was. He's the one that had to try to convert this whole mess and, and did convert some. Not many. Most of them followed Egypt. But get this now. The earth is burned and few men left. Burned. This was written in 712 B.Y. Burned and few men left. Go over quickly to Revelations. Revelations now. In chapter... Let's go to Revelation 6 again. Revelation 6. Revelation 6 and verse uh, 7 and 8 again. And when he had opened, when he had opened the, uh, the, the fourth seal, I, I heard the voice from the four living, that's a quartet, the four horns of the golden altar, saying, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and the name of it was set upon it was death and Sheol followed after him. Uh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. It's just allowed over that fourth part of the earth right there. You see that? Verse 8. Just over that fourth part of the earth to kill with war. That word sword means war. With hunger. Hunger. And with pestilence. That's disease epidemic. The same under the authority of the beast. Of this beast. And there, here you again, you got the four, the four, the four horns of the golden altar represents this whole thing throughout the Holy Scripture. Now look on down to verse 12. And I looked and he had opened the sixth seal and there's quite a difference. And behold, there was a great earthquake 
they're saying now that this this uh, An Anadrea Faults fault line is right on the spur of opening up, and this is going supposedly supposedly going to be the big one. But they're thinking that nuclear activity anywhere close to this thing is going to cause this, and they're already predicting this. But the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. This is the same generation now. If you remember, Yahshua, in Matthew 24, 29, the sun will be darkened. So he's talking about the same one right here with the great earthquake, and Yahshua also mentioned that the earthquakes would increase, which you have seen that taking place. Well, the sun will be black as sackcloth of hair, the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. <laughs> now, this is the Star Wars that I have articles here on, but I don't have time to read them. But we do have articles on this thing and, and uh, sh showing that they're expecting they're getting ready for these Star Wars, and they already got it set up in the, with their satellites to where they can do this to try to dismantle in heaven the, the satellites that Russia has that can see the United States. Russia is doing the same thing with her satellites, hoping to dismantle the United States where she can't see Russia. So this, is, this will start, once this starts, they're going to open up with everything. And you can see this right here. This is going to come together, but come behind the fourth part of man, I mean the third part of man being killed over that fourth part of the earth. The heavens, the, the sun was darkened as sackcloth of hair. The moon, was black, uh, was, uh, moon became as blood, and the stars of the heavens fell unto the earth. Uh, Isaiah 24 now shows this same thing. We, we read through verse 6, because of sin, shows that the earth will reel to and fro. It will sink like a hut, like a, a sukkah, it, uh, the word is used, and will rise no more. Well, here now the heavens, the heavens departed as a scroll, which means Yahweh is going to be right behind this thing. That is, he's going to have his protection for you. So he says, fear not, I'm in full control. <laughs> the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, that is, all this darkness, Yahweh will do this for his house. Every mountain and every, that is, you got the same thing here now, is a promotion uh, that is mixed in here with the wars. This control that the Catholic Church, let me explain that later. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men, they're still alive here now, and the, and the chief captains, and the mighty men and every bondsman, uh, he's including everyone, if you notice this, uh, uh, every free man sought protection for themselves in their governments and in their assemblies uh, of the houses of their gods and said to the houses of their gods and their assemblies, fall on us and protect us from the face of him who sits upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's a little bit mistranslated, but, uh, but it's uh, close enough for you to understand it right there. The, the wars are loosed. The, the nuclear wars are loosed. If Yahweh doesn't hold this back, uh, we could see it as early as next Sabbath. I'm... Uh, I'm of the opinion that this sermon right here, if you agree, pay attention, and vow to Yahweh that you'll never get involved again in the world, in the sin of this world, that, that uh, it seems like that uh, the, the, the Catholic, uh, that you ought to, 
uh, Yalta is the Catholic Church. Uh, they're, the, they're the Coptic Catholic religion, and, and they, they're the stiff-necked rebellious that won't pay any attention to Yahweh's laws. They rejected Yahweh through Moshe. They are rejecting the house of Yahweh now, uh, knowing full well it uh, was started by the two witnesses that Yahweh prophesied. And everybody knows that now. They, they, uh, we've got articles out. We've got uh, the shows out. Uh, it's all over the Internet, so everybody can see it. We're getting gobs and gobs of uh, response from it. And, uh, and they are wanting to come, and they will come. Yahweh says they will. Uh, there will be a protection. Yahweh's going to see to it uh, that they will be protected till they get to his house. And then they'll have a short training period, uh, which you should be able, every one of you now, to become a teacher of, uh, of righteousness. Uh, may Yahweh bless you, and I'll turn the services back to the next, next video. I love you. I love you. I love you.